believe universal consciousness is, is actually everything that we're experiencing right now. And more, and more, and more, and more, and more, and more, and more. Everything is created from universal consciousness. Absolutely everything in my belief system is conscious. Even that camera. It has a consciousness, has an awareness, which is, is completely barking mad, of course. That is a concept. It's like, well, where, where, how, how can that be proven? Well, it can't be proven. But my belief is that if I have a certain way of interacting and behaving, then that camera will respond in a certain way, or the same as the dog does, right? Same as you do. It, we all assimilate information from everything around us, and everything around us, as far as I'm concerned, everything is part of the same universal consciousness. Everything is conscious. Everything is the same thing in the physical world, in the non-physical world that we call the spirit world, in the dimensions that we even have no idea about. Because if they weren't, then we couldn't be conscious of them, and which, which clearly now we're not. But it's like saying... Um, the audio range for a human being um, is, you know, just a tiny fraction of the audio range that is possible to pick up. You know, we know that as an absolute fact. We are kind of living on that audio range that we we can hear, you know, in, in, using it as an analogy. Our experience of universal consciousness is us with our physical hearing. There's so much more alongside either side on that scale. There's so much more that goes with the universal consciousness that we're not even aware of. But when we get into those scales, when we dial up, when we pass over, when we get to the spirit world, our awareness will increase and include a certain other frequency of uh, universal consciousness. It's all universal consciousness until there is no universal consciousness. And that at that point, you are truly dead because there is no awareness whatsoever. So when will that point come? I don't know. Will it ever come? Is there anything that is not conscious or able to be processed? I believe there's an ultimate creator. I believe there's something somewhere, some, not, no, I'm not going to say somebody, but something somewhere that started. But again, you know, I don't think that, I don't think we can physically comprehend that start because it could be said that actually, the start is the is the end is the it's the eternal circle it's the uh oribus as they call it which is the snake the symbolic snake eating its own tail so that when we as a human being are formed when we when the spark of life enters us when we're just a collection of small cells it's possible and again there's absolutely no scientific proof of this whatsoever but if we look at the the symbolic snake eating its tail which is has been present throughout many um, civilizations and through eons of history as, as, as a spiritual symbol, then it may be that as we are created, then we create a whole environment in which we live. It may be that this environment that I'm experiencing is only here for my experience and the environment that you're living is only there for your experience. You're carrying around your whole world with you and at the moment our two worlds are interconnected and we are sharing the information of our two worlds. When I die, it's possible that I, sure, I die and this whole world just collapses into nothingness. I don't believe that. I believe that part of me goes on into the other dimension. But do I believe a God? Is there a God? Well, in that case, then the God would be self, which is a terribly blasphemous thing to think in some senses. But it's possible that that is the case. We don't know for sure. Personally, I believe in an ultimate creator, and I suspect that the ultimate creator ha has functioned somewhere in that kind of Oribus type way, that it has died and been born at exactly the same time, but it has died and been born in many, many billions, billions of dimensions. Life after death to me is um, um, now, as far as I'm concerned, is a, is a foregone conclusion. And was it? 30 years ago? No, 30 years ago, I wouldn't have said that at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, I grew up being dragged along to church every Sunday, to a C of E church, which I hated going to, um, purely because I was bored stupid uh, as a child. And I was um, 
dragged along there and I went along there and as I got older I started serving so I was a, an acolyte or a crucifer you know carrying the cross or carrying a candle assisting the the priest and my um it, I was not uh you know a, a good Sunday school attendant or anything like that I was literally just there because that's what I had to do until I got to an age where my parents said no you don't have to go if you don't want to so I didn't I stopped going but that um that environment growing up in that environment I mean my parents were I think quite um strong believers quite quite um they had a faith shall we say um uh, we didn't discuss it we didn't discuss a lot of things but we didn't discuss uh, religion and uh, and it was religion that is religion I mean that's not necessarily spirituality that's a religion right C of E same as Catholicism or same as Judaism or any and I'm not knocking them I'm just saying that's a that's a that's a way of practicing one spirituality, right? That's what religion is. Those years, all those years ago, no, I would have, I didn't believe in life after death. I used to lie awake at night as a child thinking about what would it be like to be dead and trying to get my head round the fact that people die. And I was trying to understand it from the point of view of Jesus having risen from the dead and trying to figure out, well, how would that work? How how much like being asleep is death? Um, you know, because that's the only frame of reference you've got when you're eight years old or something, you know? So, but as far as I was concerned, I've really only believed in life after death um, 100% in the last... 100% in the last five years. Um, and now I have no doubt whatsoever. And I it causes me some... Um, concern or some conflict with some people because I um, uh, dying is a natural process as much as being born is a natural process but our society especially in the west is all when you get to that stage towards end of life it is the focus of everything to keep that person alive and actually I say why because why keep that person alive? Because if they don't want to be kept alive, then why should they be kept alive? Because actually, if they want to move on and experience their life after death, as we say, because really there is no such word as death, it shouldn't be actually in the vocabulary, it should just be we pass on, we move on, we leave this realm we leave this dimension we move into another one because i absolutely 100 percent believe that that is the case and so why can we not just let people move on and wish them well and celebrate their passing the fact that well, because we feel such pain that they have gone that they have left us they have abandoned us that's why we hang on to them and that's not that's you know we just that's just another negative emotion that we we attach attach and of course it's the biggest one grief is one of the biggest ones and of course I feel sorry for any parent or brother or sister that's lost a loved one or, you know or, or you know not even a, a relative if it's not even a relative but obviously with the biggest the biggest loss that we all go through is losing a parent less of us lose a child heaven forbid you know that is a grief that is um, of course people have to come to terms with and live with but that is part of their life that emotional point that we talked about earlier on, that's their emotional point to, to, to learn from. And yeah, it's a heck of a lesson. I did, I feel complete sympathy and empathy for anybody that's grieving at any time. I'm still going through grief about the loss of my father and the loss of my mother. I miss them dearly. I wish they were here. And sometimes I feel their presence, but it's not the same. Even if I have that belief in life after death, not having them present to be able to give them a hug is extraordinarily painful i absolutely believe that you when you die you pass into the state you pass into the well let's call it let's call it heaven let's call it heaven why not and i believe that there is a period where you a a you are adjust you're allowed to adjust to the fact that you've you're no longer in this dimension and you also go through a judge a judgment a self-review but it's a self-review you're allowed to reach your own conclusions it's not a judgmental you know why it's a you are given the experience to reflect upon everything that you've done that is significant and therefore 
out of that reflective time and out of you know conversation if you like with with them in spirit those the management as dear old hamish would call them um, and i tend to use that term more generically than he did i term the management as even part of being spirit guides but in conversation with those that are wiser than we are um you make a decision would you want to come back again or not do you want to you know um do you want to experience life slightly differently do you want to be do you want to come back as a butterfly do you want to come back as a you know is there a lesson to be learned to come back as a dog this time around you know does it and again this time around i mean linear time as we've already said does not necessarily exist in the same way as linear time does down here so <clears throat> we can be having all of these different lives in exactly exactly the same time some people talk about enlightenment what's your Enlightenment. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I, there are some things that I'm really quite uh, lackadaisical about, and laziness, a lazy approach to my schoolwork was always one of the things that was very, very evident in the report. Uh, could do better, could try harder, um, uh, all of this stuff, and I'm afraid that even at 56 years old, I still have a tendency to be quite lazy in some of my thinking, right? So if somebody says to me, talk to me about enlightenment, I would actually probably say, really? Uh, enlightenment, I mean, again, you see, I don't mean to be rude, but for me and for many people that are opening up to understand that actually life can be different to what they perceive it to be right enlightenment the goal of enlightenment to be a to be to find i i, I believe enlightenment to be uh, to progress as far as you possibly can towards a spiritual well-being and uh, towards uh, emulating a spiritual being on this planet as possible right so it's kind of like um you try and be your absolute best your and to reach almost like a buddha state status right that's the way i see enlightenment now that might be wrong but that's the way I see it. But to me, I can't do that. I can't, I can't follow. I can follow that path as far as I can in my own environment. But you know what concerns me the most is actually helping people that are back further on the path, earlier on the path, that actually are not even aware yet that actually a lot of the chaos that's in their life is because they're not facing the right direction in terms of being in alignment with a lot of those emotional set points that they agreed to hit before they came down to this planet, right? And to me, the, if I can talk about spiritual stuff, and if it has to include spiritual enlightenment, then fine, but spiritual stuff, spiritual lifestyle in the most common sense grounded way possible, and therefore make it accessible to more and more people, then that to me is what I am interested in doing, not into attaining some kind of individual spiritual enlightenment for myself this time round. Maybe I'll have a go next time. Mm -hmm.